Oh, Manchester United, it's going to be a, a strange season, probably a pretty good season, but a strange season, and we saw that this past week, so United lose to Aston Villa last weekend, Villa were just great by the way, United then beat Villarreal, somehow they were by far the worst of the two teams, played poorly in this one, but then who else, CR7, who was invisible all game, pops up, scores the winner late in the game, all's Candy and apples, right? Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, well, we'll see. There'll be a lot of squad rotation this weekend. Maybe Ronaldo gets to start on the bench for once. Cavani could get in there. Luke Shaw might get back, having been questionable for this one. But against the Toffees, generally speaking, they're very good, especially at Old Trafford, unbeaten in nine. As for Everton, though, injuries continue to be a bit of an issue. They are getting healthier at the back in particular, but up front, still no Calvert-Lewin, still no Richarlison. That is not good against this man. Manchester United team. They did beat Norwich, of course, last weekend, but quite frankly, my media all-star team, there's no all-stars, my media team could have smashed Norwich. They're just awful, awful this season. Okay, they wouldn't have smashed Norwich, but you get my point. They're not very, very good. Still, Everton, United, you got to take United, I think, for the three points. They have that squad depth that Everton just doesn't have. Could we be seeing the first sign of adversity? For Chelsea, just over a week ago, they were the best team in world football, right? Thomas Tuchel, the best manager in world football. And then they lose to Man City last weekend, and then they lose to Juventus in the Champions League. This week, fear not, Blues fans, you'll be just fine. But there is some issue around a plan B if Romelu Lukaku is not getting good service. On the bright side, Mason Mount is healthy, it seems, for this weekend. And he has been missed as one of the great creative forces in the Premier League. But there is no N'Golo Kante as he continues to fight COVID. Now, Southampton, amazingly, zero wins so far this season. They are the draw masters with three so far. Haven't scored in three games, but Ralph Hasenhüttl has been here before. He'll figure it out. That being said, Chelsea, big favourites, and Chelsea will win this one. This is one of those, yes please, give me some more, Liverpool, Man City, and as City, Chelsea wasn't last week, this still isn't a title decider, but it's just a huge, huge match. City, of course, wrapping up their week from hell at Chelsea, where they played really well and won the game, of course, at PSG, played pretty well, lost a game, of course, but Leo Messi had something to say about that, and now at Anfield, their depth is going to be tested, people expect Phil Foden to get back in the 11, same with Jesus, can they find a focal point other than Kevin De Bruyne? He's so busy, he's still arguably the best player in the Premier League, if not Europe, but they need to find someone else other than him to create the goals. As for the Reds, 3-3 against Brentford last weekend in maybe the match of the season. Was it a wake-up call? Well, yeah, they smashed, and I mean they smashed Porto 5-1 in the Champions League. Bobby Firmino with the brace. Is Bobby Firmino back in the 11 at the expense of Diego Jota? I'd say he probably is. This should be a great match. I'm thinking draw. Lethargic, pedestrian, disinterested. No, not Crystal Palace. Leicester. That's been Leicester this season. And midweek they lost to Legia Warsaw of all teams in the Europa League. They sit in 13th place. There's pressure piling on Brendan Rodgers, although I think he will get it figured out. Leicester is way better than 13th. As for Palace... Well, Palace, the big rebuild where they were going to be relegated, hmm, isn't going according to plan, according to the fans. They are way better than advertised, looking really good with Patrick Vieira. And, of course, they took Brighton right to the end of Monday. And, quite frankly, they probably should have won that game. Still, Palace are way better than we thought. Leicester are way worse than we thought. I suspect Leicester will get back on track this weekend. To the seaside for this one, and Brighton should be in first place, as I just mentioned, but of course they blew points against Crystal Palace on Monday. We'll do a deep dive, I think, on Brighton in the next few weeks on the parlay, because they are a really, really good, surprising team, and Graham Potter is the new hot thang on the Premier League block. He's not actually that new, he's not actually that young, but 
He's really done what he's supposed to do, and that is change the style of football at Brighton and get results. So they're a fun team to watch, let me tell you. As are Arsenal right now, and Mikel Arteta was the former hot new thing on the Premier League block, but he's had a tough few months, it's fair to say, until the last three games. They've won three straight, beat Spurs in the North London derby, of course, last weekend. The Gunners are back. Crisis averted, right? Well, it's going to be a big test this weekend for Arsenal, I know. Brighton will be a big test for Arsenal. How times change. This should be a good one. I'm thinking a draw. 